Hi everyone, so welcome back to my channel again. Uh, today I'm going to do an amaryllis. It's not your normal um, run of amaryllis, it's a bit different because when I bought it I thought it was going to be like all the rest with just uh, a variegated type petal. But when it came into flower, I thought I've got to make that. Even though it's not the sort of flower that you put on a cake because it's far too big. Um, I thought well here we are so I'm going to show you the real flower to start off with and then we'll get on to the parts of it <clears throat> right so the flower we're going to do is this one here it's actually called Amaryllis Dancing Queen and it's actually got four layers of petals rather than your normal uh, one layer of six petals uh, and it is quite unusual and that's one of the reasons why I decided to do it because I have got another amaryllis that which was also very different but it didn't have as many petals as this it was your normal six petaled amaryllis so I'm going to bring you down to my board now and uh, show you what I've used to make it So I've used an assortment of petals to do this because there isn't actually, I have got an Am Amaryllis petal somewhere, but I don't know where it is. I couldn't find it to do this video, so I've decided to improvise. So you could make templates for this if you wanted, but what you need is an assortment of different sized petals. Now the first one that I'm using here is the smaller petal of the smallest um, lily cutter which is your uh, outer petals and then I've used the wide petal of um, a medium sized lily because I've got all si size three sizes then I've gone on to the full size lily cutter the wide one and then this cutter that I'm using here for the outer petals here is actually um, I forgot where it is now My, it's actually a, a leaf cutter for uh, Lily of the Valley. That's the one I've used to do the large cookies. It's a very big flower, is this? So, I'll just get rid of those for the time being. I'm only going to show you one or two petals for the simple reason that uh, you've seen me do petals before anyway. All of the petals are done more or less the same way, but I'm going to show you, show you two ways of doing the petals for the simple reason that for this flower, on the larger petals because it's so big I've used a different method for getting the wires into the petals so I'll get some paste to start off with and the colour that I've used is, is um, an ivory coloured paste so I'm just going to get this going The paste is getting a little bit stiff, so because I've used, I've needed quite needed it quite a lot. This so it's getting a little bit rubbery. This is the uh, vegan uh, flour paste that I'm using, and it can get a bit rubbery. So if you're using my the recipe that I posted on there, just bear that in mind. Try not to make too much up, but I had to make quite a lot up to do this uh, flour because there are a hell of a lot of petals on it. As I say, there are four layers of petals. One of the petals that I'm going to do, I didn't use any cutters for. And that is this petal here. Uh, that one I've done with the um, rolling down the wire and uh, rolling out method for that one. So I'm just going to make sure I've got my cell stick, there it is, to be able to do that one. The veiner that I've used for the amaryllis, as I say, it's not as deep as the, the veiner on the actual flower, but this is an amaryllis veiner, which was taken from a normal amaryllis, so I'm going to use that anyway. Right, now then, once you've got your face paste ready, I need to put some, um, just drop my cell stick on the floor. Sorry about that, everybody. <coughs> My usual thing, I don't cut off and do it again when I when I drop things or things go wrong as I keep explaining all my videos because if it goes wrong for you 
and it goes wrong for me then you need to see how to correct things when things do go wrong and it does happen sometimes and fortunately I have to work in a very confined space here while I'm just doing this don't forget to subscribe to my channel and get notifications when uh, when I upload a new video for anybody that's watching for the first time I've got loads of videos on my channel of all sorts of different things but if anybody's got any ideas about anything they'd like to see me do please get in touch and let me know because I'm always up for a channel challenge if it's something I haven't done before I'd like to have a go at doing it and I will find a way of doing it right because I haven't got too much pace left I'm only going to do a couple of petals of this so I'm going to show you two different ways of doing the petals for the smaller ones I've used, used the normal method where I use my ridge rolling pin if you can get older one of these from your uh, sugar craft supplier they're absolutely brilliant for doing your, your grooves so you don't get a heavy groove at the back if not use the other side of the cell board or a groove board whichever make it is these are made by um, uh, cell crafts have been copied by some people quite well known people who used to be associated with cell crafts right so I've got my ridges there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one of the second petals so you need three of the small ones you need six of each of these three petals these are all lily cutters all the different sizes. that's a narrow one from the smallest one the medium one uh, wide petal and the large wide petal for doing a life size lily and then the for the last petals for the last layer uh, I've used um, a lily of the valley leaf cutter the smallest one out of this is such a two there's a one larger than this but I've used the smaller one out of the set because that other one was just a little bit too big so I've tried to if I just put these inside each other again you can see the difference in the size size of the petals so you can see how I've gone up because the, the ratio is more or less the same from each size so I'm going to do the middle one I'll cut one of those out I'll do two I'll do one of them and I'll do the smaller one and then uh, right so we'll cut one of each of those out Now for these I've used uh, a 26 gauge wire, I think that's a 26, I'm going to use that for the small one, that looks quite thin, it might be a 28. I've got always got bits of spare wire knocking about at the side here and for demonstrations, just for making the petals it doesn't really matter but you need to know what size, you could use either a 28 or a 26 gauge wire, a 28 is fine for the smallest petal but you definitely need a 26 gauge wire for the larger petal have I got one on there it hasn't got a now I'll just get one out so 26 there I've used three different kinds of wires really as I say with the small ones I've used a 28 gauge wire I'm going to use this because I've, I just happen to have got them out unlike a lot of people I don't like wasting wires so for doing the smaller petals I cut the wires into four so you get four petals out of one wire then you're not cutting bits off and wasting bits of wire because to me it, sound, it seems pointless to do that and I was brought up to hate waste we never throw anything away if we could avoid it when I was a kid but I'm showing my age now so we want that to go up the middle make sure that you twist your wire into the petal 
to make sure that the uh, stem text that the wires are covered with doesn't come off. Right, so that's up there. And then Now these are quite frilly on the edge, so I'm going to do something that I normally don't do, because if you've probably watched my other videos, you, you know I always say, uh, thin your edges and then vein your petals so you don't lose any of the veining, but because this is quite frilly on the edge, what I'm doing is it the other way around. So I'm going to vein the petals first, so the groove wants to lay into there, and my wires come out a bit there, so we'll just pull that back in, out. And go back in again. I might not be able to correct this. Not quite as bad there. Just showing a little bit. Normally I wouldn't use that pet that petal, but because it's only for demonstration purposes, so do as I say, not as I do. So that wants to go down the centre of your petal, your uh, vena rather. Give a good press. And then you've got your veining on your petal. So we'll just move that to one side and do the same thing with the small one. So it's ridge into the groove. Sounds like a song, doesn't it? There we are. That's those two. And then you can thin your edges. Now I always thin my petals from the back. It's up to you which way you do it, but I think you'd less less chance of losing too much veining if you do it on the back. Because nobody's going to look at the back unless you're entering a competition. So, just go down the edges and frill it like that. If I did this first before I put in the veining, uh, vena, I would lose some of this. Because they're not flat petals, they're quite frilly, are the petals on this particular flower. There we are, so turn that over, so that's those two petals and then of course then you need to put those into your bobble form in between your grooves. I don't know whether I've got enough room on here, let me just uh, adjust some of my petals because I've got all my bits and pieces already made up here to put the flower together because obviously I've done my blue peter bit so forget my petals. What you need to do now is you need to thin, go up the centre of your petal to bring it up like that. Make sure you round it at the bottom, that's important, so that when it goes together it fits. And then that wants to go into your bobble form like that and you can let that back part curve back like that. And the same thing with the small one. I'm trying not to go off camera here because I, I get criticised for this because you can't see what I'm doing but I try, to, I try to make a note of it. So that goes in between there, that curves back as well. Just lost something on the floor. Oh. So I put those to one side. That's your normal way of doing your petals. Now with the larger petal, which is the one that I've used this cutter for, I'm going to do that slightly differently. So first of all, I'm going to use a, a much a heavier wire. It's one that I don't normally use for um, for flowers, but this one is um, a 24 gauge white wire. I have got some somewhere. Where's the packet? There it is at the back. I don't often use this wire. It's one that seems to get missed quite a lot. But if you're doing something a larger petal then you need a stronger wire on it. So really we're using three sizes of wires here. We're using a 26, a 28 and a 24. So if we put that back into order, 28, 26 and 24. So the larger the number, the thinner the wire. That's how it works. Apparently, when they're measuring wires, they bunch them all together, and it's how many they can get into this ring that you, did, uh, tells you which gauge wire you're using. 
Don't ask me who invented that, I've no idea at all. I'm not, not expert on that and I haven't researched it to find out why. I uh, should ask one of my brothers who were both engineers, see if they know, but um, I keep forgetting. Right, so we'll roll some of this paste out. I'm just going to put a bit more white fat on there. Just so that I can roll that out. You don't need a lot, on, just enough to roll it out so that your paste stays on the white, on the board when you're rolling it out you don't want to be moving it around I'm only going to get one petal out of this anyway so I didn't want to do loads of petals because there's a hell of a lot of petals in this flower so basically when I counted the petals on this particular flower that I've got it worked out that you've got the first uh, stage the center part this part here You've only got three of the narrow petals, so you only want three of those, and then three of these type of petals. And then with the other layers, except for the largest one that I'm going to do now, you want six of each. And this one I'm going to cut out without the groove up the middle, because I'm going to do the lick and stick method with this. For the simple reason, because it's so big, it's very difficult to get a wire all the way up it. There is a long groove on the back of this board that I could use. But I'm going to show you this way. For people that are not very good at getting your wires up, this is what you can do. But I wouldn't recommend doing this if you're going to enter competitions. You need your wires to go up, and so then you need to persevere with the other method. But this is not going in a competition, so... That doesn't matter. So I've cut that out. This is the largest petal. I'm going to turn that over onto the grease side. Now I've got the 24 gauge wire here. This time I'm going to cut this in half for the simple reason it's a hell of a big petal and a lot of the wire is going to go. You want the wire to go as far up your petal as you can to stabilize it just in case anything gets damaged because if it does get damaged it's a lot easier to repair them if the wire goes far enough up the petal and you're not worrying about things like that so now I'm going to take a small ball of paste about the size of a large pea roll that into a sausage and then put your wire through the center of that so that the wire comes out and then start rolling that out I'm just going to move that petal out of the way because I'm going to use my board in a minute when I get it far enough so that it's rolling up your wire like that and then just move that out of the way anything gets in the way in my confined space it can cause havoc and then roll I've got too much fat on my board there I'm just going to wipe that off while I do this I go through a hell of a lot of kitchen roll for this job So always make sure you've got plenty in when you're doing this sort of thing. And then roll it with both hands up your wire. Need it to be quite thin. You don't want too much bulk on the back of your flower. So I'm just going to check. Oh, that's just up to the edge of the wire. That's fine. That's just a little bit off on one side. So that bit there, I'm going to take that off. And then just re-roll that back onto the wire. Let's have a look and see how far we've gone up. Yeah, that should be fine. So what I'm going to do at this stage now is get your glue. And then I'm just going to rub the glue up the back of the paste keeping it still so it doesn't move pop that onto the petal and just push that down like that now again like I've done before I'm going to vein this so I'll get the veiner 
then that needs to turn over so that's on the back up the center so it's ridge into the groove pop the top on and give it a good press this will help to seal the uh, wire onto your flower right take that off lift that off of your burner and now that's squash that as I say if you were doing a competition I wouldn't do it this way because you don't want anything like that showing because you get marked down for it but I'm not doing it for a competition this is for a demonstration it's to show you different ways of uh, doing things so I'm going to put that onto my pad got a bit of paste we'll get rid of that out of the way just for the next couple of minutes until we get on to the next one and then thin your edges right up to the tip keep your ball tool right on the very edge there's less chance of losing as much veining then if you do it that way just wants to be barely on the on the paste and you get more of a frilled edge if you do it that way we don't want a ridge around the edge we just want the very edge frilling there we are then I can turn that over then the next thing I need to do now which I didn't do with those other petals I'll just go back to those and do that again bend your wire back so you've got a curve on your wire like that and then put it into your foam so I'll give my hands a smack for not doing that right and same with that one they all curve back like that and then your largest one curve that back just go up it gently like that and just curve it back then that wants to come up like this and give it up to almost a point at the edge there and also at the bottom so that it fits that will shape when I get it onto the foam so if I bring the foam back over again then I would put it right onto the very edge of your foam like this and then push it down into your foam so it cups the petal up and then just let the end hang over because they do curve back quite a lot on this uh, particular flower so I'll pop that up there now then the other little petal in the center this one here this is done slightly differently so I'm just going to get another piece of wire there get my ivory paste out you want three of these it's a good idea to get the cutter for your small lily where's that gone it's off the side here somewhere oh there it is just to measure the length of it but you need to do it slightly shorter than that because we're going to stretch it with the uh, cell stick I've probably got two I'm going to take half of that paste off actually and use half of that so I'm going to start off with a paste, piece of paste about the big the size of a marifat pea roll it into a sausage depending on which paste you're using if it's not sticky like this that I'm using uh, if it's anything like Renshaw's flower paste or anything like that put some glue on your wire so that they don't come off but I, this is quite sticky and they stay on so I'm just going to again going to go slightly past the end of the wire and roll that onto the wire I've got far too much paste here as you can see I'll take some of that off there roll that back on again Now that's going to be too long, so I'm going to take it probably about two thirds of the way up that cutter. So I'm going to take that bit off there at the bottom. If you get your nails in and take that off, roll that back onto the bottom of your paste there. So that's nice and neat like that. And then if you get your vena, the back of your vena pop that on the paste and give it a good squash like that 
Now the next thing I'm going to do now, I'm just going to check the length of that. It's probably slightly a little bit too long, but uh, we can work with that. So I'm going to stretch that up like that, and then I'm going to stretch it out to the sides here. And basically what you're aiming for is like a, the way I can describe it, it's like a cobra's head type shape. Just gone a little bit too far on that side there. Where's my little scissors? Oops. If I can find my little scissors, I can't find my little scissors. So if I've got a cutting wheel, I can check a bit off of that. It's probably gone underneath there somewhere. I had it yesterday, so I know it's there somewhere in my tools there it is there's me cutting wheel right under my nose so I'm just going to take a little bit of that off like that stretch that out again with my finger a little bit and then if you just curve the whole thing up like that up the centre just take a little bit off the top there that's a bit more than the other side then just curve that up like that and then just put that to dry I would sand that up to dry you don't need to put put that because it's quite small it's, it'll stay in place so then it ends up looking like that okay Now there's no point in doing any leaves with anything like this unless you're going to do a full blown plant because the leaves are really long and depending on how you grow your plant will depend on how big the leaves are um, if you don't over water it to start off with keep it on the dry side then the flower comes up before the leaves do uh, my leaves got a bit big on mine because I was a bit over eager watering it but there again I hadn't read about the plant before I did that so that's where I went wrong considering all the years that I've been gardening and growing loads of different things like orchids and bonsai trees and all sorts of things like that you think I'd know better wouldn't you but we all make mistakes I'm just going to get all my cutters together again so those are the cutters that I've used so basically you want three of the small one six of the next size up six of the next size up and then with the large one it has seven petals it's a bit like a rose where you've got an odd number um, when you get onto the full size roses so that's what I counted on that particular flower whether it's the same on every one of them or not I don't know but on this particular flower that was the case on both of the flowers right so the next step now is to start colouring once all your uh, bits and pieces have dried I'm using two colours here the um, tropical lime that you've seen me use a lot I tend to use for bottoms of uh, base of petals and that that have got green on and tips and things like that. I don't try not to go too heavy on green and then I've used this one which is actually um, a sugar flare colour uh, which I believe is called coral I can't see the label because my label's got worn on it and it's sort of like um, a pinky orangey type colour it's not quite a peach a bit more on the orangey side but the way that the petals ha are coloured the way that I've coloured them is you've got a bit of stronger colour right on the very edge of the petals and then you've got this sort of it's like lines on it but it's very difficult to do the lines unless you're really good at painting if you're really good at doing that sort of thing then if you study it on uh, online there's plenty of pictures of them online um, you can do that but I find to when I'm doing flowers I try to simplify it as much as I can because if you're doing them for cakes and things like that you haven't got a lot of time to work on them time is money so you have to try and simplify the flower that you're doing and yet get the same effect if that makes sense right so colouring the petals I've just left a couple of petals to colour so I'm just going to get those out now I've got one of the smaller ones and the largest one out so I've got two brushes here 
my green brush that I keep for all my green colouring and, and then I've used, oh, picked the wrong brush up there, then I've got another one that I've used for the orangey colour. So I'm going to start off with the coral to start off with and what I've done with this is onto your brush, off your brush and then just catch the very edge of the petals going down like that. I'm just going to move my camera up a little bit this way just to make sure you can see this so I can be in a comfortable position when I'm doing it and just catch the very edge and I'm going about probably about a third of the way down the petal it doesn't seem to go all the way down on the petals on these so a little bit more on my brush and then what I'm doing with my brush sideways in other words the narrow way then I'm just going to dust down in sort of streaks you don't have to be too precise with this but it, it doesn't seem to have anything in the middle so it's more to the side not quite down to the base of where you've done the edges but sort of meeting at the top like that all the petals don't have to be the same, they do tend to vary a little bit, I mean um, we're not trying to co copy each petal, petal individually so I've kept more or less the same on all the petals to get the effect like that and again down and down don't want stripes, it wants to be blended so you don't want it to look like a stripe There we are, that's that done. And then onto the small ones. I've done I've just left two of these open because I'd already put them together. And then again just go round the edge like that. And same on the narrow petals. and I haven't done much else with them I've just brought it pulled it in a little bit from the sides and just left it at that because with them being so small you don't need a lot of that and then I've dusted the lime green at the base of those petals there so these when we put this together these petals come quite well up like that with the other smaller petals behind them like that when you put it together okay Normally I start from beginning, but I thought you've seen me do these with other flowers before, so you know what I'm doing there. But you can always go back to my other videos, and you'll you're just doing the same thing with all the different layers. I've just tried to cut it down so it doesn't get boring. So the next step is now to get the green brush. Oops, nearly lost my brush again. With some lime green green on it, and then if you get hold of your petal from the top just be careful about the colouring you've got and then just pull the green up from the bottom like that turn it over and do the same thing on the back there don't look to be any colour on the back of the petals on the uh, on on these so I haven't bothered with that on the back and then the same on all the other petals as well just pull the green up like that and on the back So, once you've coloured all of your petals, which I have already done, I'm just going to get rid of that. I don't think I've got any more to do. I'm just going to get rid of that piece of paper in my bin and get all my petals out ready to assemble. So, you've got your large ones there. Two, three, four, five. I've got another couple of those somewhere. Six, seven. So we've got three, six of the next one down. That's the small one, so we've got another one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, should be another one somewhere, there it is, 
six of those. So those are all the petals that are all ready to go onto the flower. So I'm just going to get some uh, Nile green tape when I find where I've put it. I've done the usual thing of putting it somewhere safe so I can lay my hands on it and lost it. Some dark green there. Where's the nail green gone? Just bear with me a second while I find it. Right, I found my tape and I've got my trusty little cutter here. If you haven't got one of these, treat yourself to one of these because these are a godsend for cutting your wire. Just with normal razor blades in, you can buy from anywhere. And I'm going to use, to start off with, I'm going to use half width tape for the um, smaller petals and then I'll go on to full width tape for the last lot it doesn't matter so much about thickening the stem up on the back of this because if you're going to do a stem on it it needs this very thick stem on it it's very fleshy it's actually hollow inside if anybody's uh, not grown them before um, you can use them as a cut flower and uh, according to one of the sites that i go on who is um sarah raven the caller who basically like a garden center and she does uh, advice um, videos on plants and she did one on the uh, on the amaryllis and if you're going to use them as a cut flower because they're hollow inside you can either put a thin cane or a wire up inside your flower to stop them from flopping over because it's hollow inside right so I'll start that off underneath so I've already got my uh, first set of six petals on so I'm going to start with the smallest petals so I'm doing it the same way as I do with the lily start with your first petal in between the two petals on the layer before and if you've rounded your bottoms they should fit in quite nicely there you get those in get those in position and you can pull your wires down to make sure they're nice and tight in so they're not flopping about do this after each layer of petals that you've got and if necessary to make sure they're not going to move anymore you can tape down this helps the next layer of petals to grip on a lot better because the tape is sticky And you, once you've pulled your wires down, you can adjust your petals. So I'm not going to tape all the way down with this. I'm just going to tear that off now and start the tape off again underneath those petals, like that. Then put in your next three petals. Just checking the camera to make sure that I'm in shot. I was a bit shocked when I looked at my uh, analytics on uh, my channel yesterday. Somebody actually gave me a thumbs down for one of my videos and I have no idea why. Everybody else has given me thumbs up. It's the first thumb down I've ever had. So if anybody is thinking about doing a thumbs down, please let me know why you're doing it. Because if it's something that I've done wrong, then I would like to know about it. Like everybody else, like all of my students when I was teaching at college, we need to know if we've done something wrong, where we've gone wrong. So, once I've got those three petals and then you go on to your next layer now. So they're going between the last layer that you've just put in.
try and keep a good grip on your on your um, stem while you're twisting it round. It helps to stabilise your petals as well as pulling your wires down as well. So I'm just going to get my wires now and I'm just going to pull those down. Find out which is the right wire. That's one of them. I think that's another one. Yes it is. And that one's well down anyway. Right, and then you can put in your next three petals in between those petals. So it's always three petals and then three petals behind on each layer. Keep your tape flat if it's twisting round like that's just doing. Just open it out. This is where I could do with background music. I tried it once putting back background music in and then um, Facebook disallowed it for some reason and I wouldn't care but it was off my editing program, Microsoft editing program and they didn't allow it so I couldn't use that so I haven't done it again. Some of these big corporations can be a bit funny and I know that you have to pay uh, license for you have to have a license for playing music in public places like shops and things like that sort of thing and I'm sure that a lot of them don't have them in or don't have a license rather I should say just pull all your petals down and then I'm just going to tape down right down to the base with this that's oh, moving around so I need to find out which wire that is. You can adjust your position of your petals once you've pulled all your wires down. I don't often do life size flowers but on cake sometimes there are certain flowers that you can do life size like lilies and roses and things like that because they're not too big. you just got to be careful if you're using anything like that on a cake that you don't overpower it. Right so we can lift all those up now, get those all in position, have a look at that. Yep that looks alright. Right, so I'm just going to pop that down for a minute now and I'm going to get some more tape and I'm going to go on to full width tape for this now. I don't need too much because I've not that uh, too many petals on. And I suppose really with there being an odd number of these now you don't necessarily have to worry about where you start with these because these are just going to go round the base of all your ones that you just put on. At the bottom it looks a little bit odd because there looked to be, be a bit of a space but I mean nature, nature is a, a funny thing. I'm just going to stagger these round here so that if anything needs to go behind it doesn't matter. This is one of the reasons I use a stronger wire on the larger petals as well for this simple reason that um, it's easier to keep them in place when you're doing big things like this. You've got a stronger wire on it. If it's too thin, then it will drop down anyway because of the size of the wire. And you don't want that once you've gone to all this trouble. Putting all these, all this work you've put in with all these petals. So I'm just going to pull these down now. Just to make sure they're all nice and tightly in. One can go in there. 
I've just broken a little bit of paste off the bottom just get rid of that because that was getting in the way don't forget to stretch your tape while you're doing this as well to make sure that uh, it sticks on otherwise it won't you don't want everything dropping off once you've gone to the trouble of getting all your petals in making sure that tape goes right up to the wires there we are now I'll see where we are with those two more to go in and the other one can go in there as I say once you've got all your petals in then you can go around and adjust them and make sure that everything is as you want it And with this flower it doesn't so much so matter if the um, petals are dropping back a little bit because they do on the actual flower as you've seen with the flower that I showed you. I find the wire for that one, that one's pulling down a bit. No it's not that one, that one, that's it. If you can do you might be a good idea to put this upside down while you're doing it as well so things don't move around so much right the way down to the bottom now if you were making this into an actual plant if you wanted to do it in porcelain or something like that then what you can do then is with your um, make you'd have a couple of flowers on one on either side of these or even three if you want I had one that had four heads on it and then um, you'd have about probably about that much of your stem showing with your flower on and then you attach that to another stem and what you do is cover that with strips of um, kitchen roll and then cover it again with your full width stem uh, to make it into a thicker stem so there we are that's my amaryllis dancing queen i hope you've enjoyed the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you've got any comments let me know and um, i'm getting a few more comments now than i used to get before because i think people are starting to take notice um, and come back and see me in the next video so take care stay safe and see you soon